Okay, let's get started on the I918 Supplement B, also called the CERT or the SUP B. This is where we ask law enforcement to certify the victim's helpfulness. And without this, we can't submit the U status application. So it's something we do very early in the process. Um, victim information should be filled in from Abacus. So hopefully you have the correct name, both last names, um, and the given and middle name filled in correctly in Abacus, and those will fill in here. Other names used might be the name that uh, a different name that was used on the police report. It's good to put that name, whatever the, the police report name was, um, into this other names used. Even if it's just like if the person's name was um, Hernandez Lopez, Jose Manuel, um, and other names used could be Jose Hernandez. Um, just to clarify that it's the same person. Sometimes people use uh, false names in police reports, so it's really important to put that there. But the family name up at the top and given name and middle name, these need to be whatever he is submitting his I-918 and I-192 as. They've got to match those three documents, even though it might the police report might be under a different name, and that's why that's good to have that there. Date of birth will already be filled for you and check male or female. And now you need to get your agency information. We're going to help you decide when we do a roadmap with you who the certifying agency is. Generally, it will be the police department for which you have the police report, Oakland, San Francisco, Hayward, or something like that. Sometimes, though, there are issues with certain um, restrictive policies of some police departments, and so you'll, um, you'll need to go to the district attorney in that case. Sometimes you prefer to go to the district attorney, but they have a policy, for example, the San Mateo Police Department um, won't certify a case while it is still being prosecuted. They need to wait until the end. So if it's going to take a really long time for that, you might try this, the San Mateo Police Department. Some police departments and district attorneys have, and increasingly are getting um, relationships where, with each other where they want to um, delegate that one agency will only certify if the case has not been charged and the other only if it, ha if it um, has been charged. So the police department would only certify if the case was not charged, the DA only if it had been charged. Unfortunately, there are police departments that won't certify if a case wasn't charged. Um, and so we are just sort of at the, at the mercy of those departments. We have done a lot of advocacy to get to where we can, wh where we are, um, and more is needed. So here's actually um, a, a police department that has, has a, a narrow policy. The San Mateo Police Department will certify recent and maybe even some, um, s some cases that are several years old if they're domestic violence or sexual assault, and they actually got one back to us fairly quickly but they are much more hesitant and may be outright refusing to sign for murders or felonious assaults. We haven't taken them one, I don't think, that is a really clean felonious assault or murder um, where they are sure that the crime happened and it was recent and the person was helpful. Um, they haven't refused to do that as far as I know. So we fill in all of the information for that certifying de department. So where do we find that? We get it from, um, we will go to, you will log in to Gmail um, with our um, ICWIC volunteer login, ICWIC voluntary, volunteer at gmail.com. The password is ICWIC Evangelist. And once you are logged in, you will go to Documents. Um, here we are, Google Docs. And then scroll down to the designated certifying officials wait until it has loaded enough to bring up California for you because this has um, I think 20 states this is um, this is maintained by Jessica Farb and it is an incredibly um, active and robust um, uh, document nationwide and it's amazing so you can see that we have how many certifiers in California on the list 156 it looks like um, and so when we're going to the San Mateo Police Department to find out the information that we need, um, go down one more. I've already filled in Callagy. I've already said that he's the deputy chief. Um, across the top here, you'll see 
the information that's required on the form, the name of the certifying officer, title and division and office, name of the head of the certifying agency, the address city zip, phone number, zip, uh, a phone number and fax. You don't need the email on the 918B, but some of these certifiers will accept the application by email. It also says you'll need this for the form, agency type, a federal, state, or local certifying agency category, judge, law enforcement, prosecutor, or other. And then the rest of these are comments about how, what format you should be sending it in, in whether you should fill out the form, how long it takes, um, if there are particularly narrow or generous criteria. So we are just going to I think I've already filled all that in in this model form. Um, I don't have his phone number in, but we don't have to go through all that now. So this is an imaginary case. He's local. The case status is completed. The category is law enforcement. And then you'll put in the police report number here, which you find in the upper right-hand corner of the police report. Um, let us um, pretend like this is a domestic violence case so that we can be sure that he's going to sign it. Um, and we are pretending that that is the date that it occurred. Um, one of the things that I want to mention is that sometimes you will see that maybe there was a, sec a sexual assault by, by a spouse. Um, sometimes they will say that there was a felonious assault involved and in false imprisonment. In my experience, checking more isn't necessarily useful. You can do it if you like, but as long as you just have one qualifying crime, you're fine. Similarly, when you can see that they allow you to say four different dates here, I tend to just pick the strongest one um, and use any other police reports as evidence of additional substantial abuse. But sometimes you can show a pattern um, over a period of weeks in which the police are called several times and the person is increasingly helpful and finally the, the perpetrator is arrested. So it's nice in those cases to have a lot here, but it's not required. You only need one qualifying crime to hang your U visa case on. And then the, the penal code citation. Um, in this case, I'm just imagining it to be Section 243E, which is domestic battery. Um, yes, it did occur in the United States. No, it never violates um, a federal extraterritorial jurisdiction statute that is too random and rare. I say the city where it occurred, I don't put the actual address. And then in the brief description, I used to think that the officer would only be getting the entire story of the U visa from the I-918 Supplement B. So I wanted to explain the context and, and everything. And then I have increasingly found from talking to immigration and other practitioners that you want to be super direct. It's going to make it easier for the for the certifier. You don't want any language that the applicant has given you that is not in the police report. You basically want to take this directly from the police report. And some police reports actually have a summary in it, and you can even go smaller than that. For one, as you can see, you can't fit much into this um, into this box. Abacus can lets you change the font, but I've never seen us really need more than a few sentences in this in this uh, place. So I like I just state who hit who, um, who did what to who, um, and then if there's a follow up, yes, you can say how the police got involved, but you don't have to. Okay, and then a description of the known or documented injury. Similarly, I used to fear that this was our only place to to state what happened, and that if the police said that uh, that she was only you know had a red face and a small bruise, that that wouldn't be considered. Um, substantial. And so we and a few other um, um, practitioners started adding this line to it. Additional evidence of substantial abuse may be submitted with her application for U non-immigrant status. Um, I, I don't think there's any harm in putting this. I like it just in case we get a rogue adjudicator who woke up on the wrong side of the bed and, um, and, and decides that she does want to count on the supplement B for the entire account of the person, the crime, the criminal activity and the substantial abuse. So it doesn't hurt to put this extra little line unless um, South San Francisco Police Department said it didn't like it. 
So we get feedback from law enforcement agencies that have gotten us to be more and more minimalist in the 9818B. I-918B. Okay, part four, the check marks. If you don't say yes to one and two, has information and has been helpful, uh, you will not um, win your U visa case. Number three, immigration has said they understand that this is a double negative and it is completely confusing and they will not hold either a yes or a no um, answer against the applicant in this. My general understanding is that if the case is closed, um, then you say yes, um, you know, the investigation has been closed. Yes, she has not been requested to provide further assistance. I don't attach an explanation, but um, I used to, and I, I haven't seen any difference from immigration on whether, on whether they do anything about that. However, we will attach an explanation briefly detailing the assistance she's provided. Um, instead of attaching it to the form, we'll put it in, and I'll show you this in a second, in this box, other, please, please specify. But first, we need to get to part four, number four, has unreasonably refused to provide assistance. If you answer this yes, the application will be denied. So um, if you can't answer it no, we're not going to submit that application. So other, please specify, we say helpfulness of the victim. And then we say Ms. Flores um, answered questions from responding officers and told them that she wanted, what was his name? Sorry. Medina arrested. Okay. So that's, uh, that's frequently all that we're going to say. It's great if the police report says, because again, we don't want to write stuff that's not in the police report because we don't want to make law enforcement... It, they're very anxious about... That law enforcement is anxious because when they sign down here at the bottom, it says that they are certifying under penalty of perjury that everything that's written above here is true. And so if it's not in their records, they don't want to sign. That's why we keep it as brief as we can. So even if the applicant told you that she said um, and, um, you know, that she wanted him arrested and she wanted to press charges, if it doesn't say that, um, we don't put that. So we would just say she answered questions from the responding officers. And maybe that she identified as her assailant, whatever the police report says, okay? So um, that's all that that's going to be there. You can also say additional evidence of helpfulness may be submitted. Okay, now let's pretend that they were married. So um, the next question in part five is, um, are any of the victim's family members uh, involved? And in this case, it's yes. His name, I think, was Jose Medina. And it is her spouse. And the involvement is he is the perpetrator. Okay? So now that's ready, and we will send it to print. And then, okay, now let's look at who we send it to and how we send it to it. So we have a cover letter that we will keep in. Let me see if I can find where that is. Hang on one second. We have a document. Uh, I didn't put it in here. Um, there is a document that um, in the... <laughs> Sorry about this. So if you go to exclamation mark U visa exclamation mark U visa practice materials and then you go to number five I-918 Supplement B, and you choose the uh, the next subfolder, specific LEAs, then you will find a long list of certifying officials, uh, of, of cover letters to various certifying officials. Um, and then you choose, maybe at San Leandro or Fremont, and there may be already some um, other victim's name in there, and you'll have to delete it. But here's basically what it's going to look like. 
um, it says our office represents this applicant and I'm writing to request the whatever Fremont Police Department's endorsement of oh, San Mateo for Ms. Blank um, that you'll fill out. Um, she understands that it's her ongoing responsibility to assist the police department. Okay, and then you say the name of the applicant, the name of the crime, date of the crime, the California Penal Code section, name of the perpetrator. Sometimes that it's unknown because it's a felonious assault by strangers, uh, which the police department is obviously clear because that's why you're writing to them. The police department number, and then if you're going to the district attorney, the docket number. I have also sometimes, if you have additional information like the victim advocate name, um, or the district attorney's name who's on the case, fill those out as well. And then you just say thank you for your partnership. Uh, it's going to be from either me or from Jess, as you can see here. So even if you're preparing, it'll go out under our name. You print that, you slap that on top of the supplement B, you make a copy on both sides to save paper and weight of the police report, and you mail it to the officer and you will be able to find their information right where you filled it all in. So that's pretty easy to give us a copy first so that we can take a look at it. Um, so more and more what we are learning and what I think you're already getting from this is keep it simple. Okay, so that is the supplement B request. Let's see what else I was hoping to do. Oh yes, sometimes and we are not going to make you do too many of these we will have something that doesn't fit in one of these categories. Um, one of the things that we'll see is, because um, other than domestic violence and sexual assaults and some other, and other crimes against women, sometimes it is we get people who were clearly victims of, false, uh, of felonious assault, but the police report doesn't say that. It will say battery, or it will say battery with great bodily injury. And we need to make the case to the law enforcement agency, or robbery is another one. Um, robbery is very common, and we have many times gotten that approved, but in that case, what we'll say here is robbery um, in this other section, and related crimes. So what we're saying is that it is a related crime to the felonious assault, and what the other thing is is battery with great bodily injury. Then we're going to need to... Um, I'm giving it the same date, that was a bad day in town, um, and that the, the penal code section for robbery with um, great bodily injury is 243D, and then I'm saying here, see this explanation about why this is a qualifying crime. Then I describe what happened. As you can see from this description, it was three suspects, and they, they kicked him in the head, um, as well as all over his body. So sure seems like a felonious assault to me. A felonious assault is the um, unlawful uh, attempt to um, to cause great bodily injury, to the, the, coupled with the present ability to cause um, serious injury to, um, to the victim. So clearly in a case of, uh, in this case, they intended that. Now, Oddly, the reason that battery is a little bit different, I don't know why they call this battery rather than felonious assault. Battery actually doesn't have an intent category. You could actually just bump into somebody, and if they fall into the street and hit their head um, and and nearly die, you, you're, you're not guilty of having intended to do that. So that's why we can't end up calling it a, a felonious assault. So we have to make that big old argument. Anyway, so we try to, we, we make this part fairly strong. Um, I tend to um, make it really serious. I, I make it really, I, I don't try to underplay here. I say exactly how he was injured, how many people were involved. Um, and then I do as much as I can to describe the injuries. In fact, in cases like this, we might even say, you know, in this case, I say he was treated, transported to the to the hospital. Um, I might even add in here that he was treated at the hospital for something, and then I will attach with my supplement B request a copy of the hospital report so that the certifying officer will be able to feel okay signing a supplement B that includes this additional stuff. And the reason for all this is that then we're still answering yes, 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 and no, 
then when we write here, we have language already in the um, um, either in the U visas folder and down where it says law for U visas and another folder called qualifying criminal activity and also in the I-918 folder there's some other arguments where we have specific language that explains why for example um, a battery committed by five people is the same as a felonious assault um, or why a robbery is the same as a felonious assault and those we will um, in addition to helpfulness here where, where that we always have to put in he was, you know, he talked to police after he recovered consciousness or whatever. Um, and and note that the some law enforcement agencies require some really active helpfulness. So if somebody was unconscious because they were at the hospital, or if they didn't know who hurt them because they came up from behind, they won't certify um, somebody's helpfulness, which um, is fairly unusual. We've had many, many certifications of people who um, who have no idea who hit them um, and ran off. But some departments are getting more conservative or we're reaching out to new departments that are conservative um, that won't certify helpfulness in those, in those situations and that sucks. Um, but in addition to the helpfulness in this section, um, we will explain why it's certifying why it is um, qualifying um, criminal activity. And like I say, we've got some pretty good arguments that you can just grab out of that folder and cut and paste into here. Um, generally, in this case, the um, perpetrator is going to be unknown or they certainly aren't going to be related. So you'll do the same thing. You go to the same place and you make the certification request. You might also say, um, note that we are asking that you certify for for a slightly different crime that's that's um, similar activity. There is a um, there is a come on come on you can do it supplement B wow um, this is actually working. If you go to promoting U visas to law enforcement. There's a Department of Homeland Security um, U visa certification guide, and obviously you don't have to figure all this out. When we're doing a roadmap with you and deciding who you should go to for um, for a certification, we will tell you whether you need to do any specific stuff. But this um, this guide by DHS is very clear that somebody can be considered helpful even if they don't know who who it was. That if they if they just are not um, affirmatively unhelpful, it may be able to, the, the person can be certified and will be approved if the certifier will, will approve it. So that pretty much wraps up the I-918 uh, Supplement B. Thank you.